Good afternoon, everybody. I'm your host, Crystal, and this is another edition of the 9 O'Clock Meltdown podcast. And we are in my living room over speakerphone. I have the band Morning Wood. Now, <laughs> that's a little bit of a play on words. <laughs> I The first time I read it, I looked at it and I'm like, oh my God, I burst out laughing. <laughs> so wonderful. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your schedule. Um, I know right now you guys are in the throes of the Renaissance Festival. We are. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Wonderful. So this is a little bit different from what I usually do. I usually go on with uh, other musicians and things like that. I mean, you guys are musicians, but I've never interviewed anyone that does the Renaissance Festival. Yep. So thank you so much. Are, are you guys there now? Yes, yes, we are. You're hearing the Renaissance Festival in the background as we speak. All the death and <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. All right. Well, let's jump in here. How did you guys come up with the idea for Morning Wood? And now it's not it's not morning like good morning. It's morning like you're mourning someone's death. Correct, correct. Uh, it's the morning wood. It is. Uh, we do sad music um, and very sad, spooky the heavy music. Quotes. <laughs> um, it was. Uh, it started really as just the name. I came up with the name about four or five years ago, and I really liked it, and I wanted to build something off of that. And back in February, I put out a request on Facebook for musicians, and I got these three. <laughs> on on Facebook, really? Yep, yep. They, they're all people who are friends with me, um, separate from each other. Uh, mm-hmm. None of the three of them knew each other before being in the band. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So was it, did you go on like a community site, or was it just on your own personal page? It was just my own personal page. I just uh, made a post saying that I was looking for musicians, and mm-hmm. I got a lot of people, have- yeah. <laughs> different repertoires that we come from. Um, I'm the lead singer of the punk band Anarchists for Better Lovers. Um, Chad, you've had a lot of experience at the Renaissance Festival. Yep, I've been in previous bands at festival. I also do a lot of improv music around the Twin Cities. Uh, so it's kept me on my toes, and I just love this atmosphere. So I was uh, I was really excited when I heard uh, Aiden talking about this. So I was really looking forward to it. Yep, and both Ian and I have... Uh, very long classical background. We, uh, he was in orchestra for many years, and I was in big band for many years as well. Oh, excellent, excellent. Actually, let's kind of dive into that. So uh, on the phone right now, I've got Aiden, Chad, Rachel, and Ian, correct? Correct, yes. All right, excellent, excellent. So now, is this group really the the four of you? Do you add people as you go along? Is it, is it very... Yeah, one mm-hmm. member who's coming out to join us next year. Yeah. Um, Katie Graham. Yeah, but as of right now, it is just the four of us. We're still very new, so we haven't had much as uh, as much as uh, role changes. So mm-hmm. okay, all right, sounds good. So now, uh, Aiden, you said that uh, you and Chad, I believe, kind of come from more of a classical kind of big band background. Was that more in high school? Was it an extracurricular kind of thing? What What did you guys play? Well, that was uh, that was me and Ian. Ian, uh, I do apologize. It, it started in high school, and then for myself, I did go on into college and continue performing or er, uh, seeking that, and I went into music education. Oh, and, and okay. It, and in my case, I, I started in, in high school orchestra when I was nine years old, mm-hmm. uh, and then eventually I moved to a school that didn't have an orchestra program, so mm-hmm. I joined the state orchestra at uh, the Minnesota uh, uh, youth symphony. Uh, uh-huh. It's been too long now, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much my story. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, Aiden, are are you a teacher during the year, and then you do this in the summer months, or? I sadly did not finish my uh, music education. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So, really? Technically, yeah. it's still going. Being out here, it's, it's like every day is a classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. And now, um, I actually just went to the Renaissance Festival this year. It's been quite a while for me, but uh, 
Joseph really wanted to dress up and, and go and things like that, so we did. Um, there's lots of acts that you guys aren't necessarily up against, but I mean, there's a stage almost on every corner in that place. Was it difficult to get involved with the Renaissance Festival? I know in the past when I've looked at it, um, there is a, a vetting process and you have to, you know, perform in front of the uh, campaign managers and, and all these different things. Was that difficult to get on board? So it really isn't as dis difficult as it sounds. Becoming a street character is fairly easy. You come out and uh, you, you do audition and really, they're just looking for somebody who's willing to get out there and make a fool of themselves. Okay. <laughs> and uh, very much then, and then oh, yeah. they'll put you through an academy, so you learn kind of the basis of what to expect uh, out, out during the Renaissance Festival environment and uh, the prerequisites, how you want to approach characters, how you want to approach customers. So it's, there's a little bit of a lesson involved ahead of time, but it's, it's, it really is for anyone who wants to go out and be involved. Okay. And then uh, both myself and Chad here, we do have experience out of the Renaissance Festival before we started playing new, or before we started this band. Uh, mm. Like Chad was saying, he was working here 13 years before this playing music, and I worked for the last three playing music. And so coming in with the band and having both of us with that experience, it was easier for us to get stages to actually play on. Okay. Uh, more than just walking around and playing music. Mm. It was a little mm -hmm. more full. Yeah, so we, we were very lucky with that where, where, as our rookie year, we are starting off uh, several steps ahead. <laughs> excellent, excellent, wonderful. And how did you guys get involved with the Renaissance Festival? I mean, I, I know, Aiden, you said that you put the shout out on Facebook. Rachel, you joined in. Um, but how did you and Ian get involved beforehand? Was it just something that you guys wanted to do? Well, I can tell you really quick my, my story. So this mm -hmm. is Chad. My story summed up, uh, I produced a lot of music in the studio environment. Oh, I'm more, okay. uh, back on the day, I would say I'm more of a producer's musician, a musician's musician. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of recording, and I met someone in another band, and I ended up recording their first CD. At around, right around the same time, they lost one of their members. Um, I'd only been out to the Renaissance Festival previously, and I had such a miserable experience, I swore I would never come back to this oh, one. No. Jump ever again. I had broken my left ankle. I had a cast on. It was miserable. And I said, I'm never coming back to this place again. So when I was invited to come out and watch this band and be a part of it, I was like, Yahoo! And then I came out and saw the magic. And uh, when they lost their band member, they basically dragged me, kicking and screaming, into the group and <laughs> performing ever since. And it, it changed my perspective on uh, uh, performing. Uh, music in general, it's really made me a, a much stronger musician. It's given me so many connections I otherwise wouldn't have, and it's allowed me to meet these three. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really been nothing but a benefit for me in the long term. Excellent. And for me, it's a fairly similar thing that happened. Uh, I had only ever been out to the Renaissance Festival one time before I came out here as a performer. And uh, I had some fun, and the year after that, I got into doing stand-up comedy and doing some improv with Fearless Comedy Production. And a lot of people in that were in the Renaissance Festival, and they really encouraged me to come out and, and do it. And, and I did, and I loved it. I absolutely loved my rookie year out here. Had so much fun, and I know now that I'm going to be here for at least the next 30 years. <laughs> yeah. uh, for, for me, I grew up coming out here. My parents would bring me all the time. Uh, I would come a lot as a teenager, and busk without permission. <laughs> ah. <laughs> they call it a, a patron. It's a, uh, yeah. <laughs> basically a customer that's pretending to be a staff member. Yes, and so <laughs> when uh, Aiden offered me the chance to kind of go legit, I really jumped at it. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Wonderful. And then in, in, in my case, um, my mom used to work out here back in the early 90s, and she would dress me up and bring me out here, and I'd be part of a show, and um, then she stopped doing that, um, and I just came out here with this, the patron for a long time, and when Aiden asked me, I mean, it was perfect timing. I wanted to get back into playing again instead of just working, mm -hmm. so perfect, mm -hmm. and I, I plan to be out here until I just can't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. So uh, you guys will be the the older generation there entertaining the young, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wheeling us out here in buckets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> wonderful, guys. Wonderful. And now, Ian, you said that you you sprained your ankle or broke your ankle. How? Uh, how did yeah, you do that? A long time ago, uh, I I I was a, I was a teenager. I had broken my ankle skateboarding. I don't know, for some ridiculous way. Oh. And my parents and my grandmother, they were like, "Oh, we have to go to the Renaissance Festival." And it's raining, I'm much kind of like today, but worse. It was just a mm-hmm. downpour. It was a thunderstorm. It was dark outside. I had two hefty ba- hefty bag, uh, bags around my uh, calf because I couldn't get it wet from the rain, and I had crutches. Oh, no. And I was a teenager, so I wasn't a kid, and I wasn't an adult. Uh, it was just horrifying. Teenage, uh, right? Pop, pop, pop. I didn't connect to anything or anyone, and here's this. And my parents wanted to see every square inch of the place. And I'm like. I'm never coming back to this dump again. Ever, oh. ever, ever, ever. So it took a lot to drag me out here. Mm-hmm. Now I, I, I couldn't imagine not being here. So. <laughs> wonderful, guys. Wonderful. And Rachel, I just to kind of get into it a little bit. Now, you are the lead singer of the group. Uh, do you have any classical training? Do you just kind of sing in the shower? I mean, what? how did you get your start? I don't. I kind of like uh, my, my career is actually as a writer. Um, and I kind of just tripped and fell into working in music, um, because I've always liked to sing. I have some background in musical theater, Mm -hmm. um, but again, that was just kind of like, made lots of weird friends in high school and got cast a lot, um, as a result. Um, and, yeah, I, I would write pieces for friends' bands, um, for a long time, and then, uh, eventually, my friend uh, Jake Schlegel just discovered that I have a decent natural singing voice. And it's more hand. than decent, and it's more than natural. <laughs> you, uh, I, I would swear that she's actually highly proficiently trained. When she started singing for us, when she first showed up, and I'm a studio musician and I produce, I was blown away. So she's got very raw natural talent that's far. I mean, it it goes beyond a lot of people's. Uh, plenty will experience this singing out here so it's a real trip to be and an honor to be paired up with somebody like uh, like Rachel that just has a tremendously strong singing voice it's amazing mm-hmm. aww <laughs> oh, I wish you up the Minnesotan in me <laughs> <laughs> wonderful excellent oh did I lose you no, we're still here. No, okay, all right. It's just the uh, the Renaissance Festival going on in the background. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're right next to the blacksmith, so you can hear him talking uh, out of the door over there. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, I was about to say, I'm like, are you are you next to that guy? <laughs> no. Wonderful, wonderful. So how many, now do you guys just do weekends? Do you do weekdays as well? Uh, the Renaissance Festival doesn't run on weekends. So we do uh, every weekend that the fest is open. We set seven out. weekends, mm-hmm. uh, five shows each day. Oh my goodness, that's quite a bit to kind of cram in a day. We 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 pretty good. We do have like a full twelve hours out here, so yeah. Holy so Hannah. we do some additional busking and stuff around on the side. Uh, you know, go play for the kids up at Mermaid Cove, and those of us that have the endurance to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, how, how does this conflict with the day jobs? I'm uh, assuming that you have day jobs. <laughs> that, that is a, a bold assumption. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with me, it works pretty well. I have uh, Fridays and Saturdays off, and I was able to convince my employers uh, to give me seven Sundays in a row. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, it's been really convenient for me. Wonderful. It, in my case, um, I'm, I'm currently between jobs, but before mm-hmm. this, I was supervising a group home for people with disabilities. Um, it just got to a point I had to, to do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yep, I, I get that. <laughs> as, as I said, I do freelance writing and also child care, so I can set my own hours pretty easily. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. It works out very well. All right, excellent, guys, excellent. And and Chad, I, I can attest to the uh, working at an old folks' home or working with the, the handicapped as well. Um, it's a challenge. It, it really is. And um, hats off to you for giving it a shot. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, well, the thing is, you know, um, 
um, I was out here for quite a while, and then I had to leave just for physical difficulties. Mm. Recently, I had to stop working. I've got uh, some issues with my back, lower back. So it's a lot of time uh, dancing and walking around with an accordion. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Accordion will really mess it, it, up. It, it does things to your lower back, and I, and unbeknownst to me, I had a pre-existing condition. So oh. uh, eventually, it, 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 I met I met my match as far as endurance goes. And so mm-hmm. uh, part of being invited to come back out here after being uh, gone for two years was kind of an endurance challenge of will I be able to? Will the plant? Can I get the plants to align? Can I get the right meds? Can I get a doctor that believes in me? Can I get my back stretched? Can I get everything? set so that we can be here and we actually uh when we negotiated a contract we were able to get a camper out here so we can actually be on site for the entire weekend get here friday night and then leave sunday we've got a place to crash so those those of us older folk can just go lay <laughs> down when we need to while the kids right away so it really works out for everyone in that mm-hmm. thing. Excellent, excellent. Well, you guys don't sound old. I, <laughs> what are we talking about? Old here? You're well. Thank you. Bless your heart. <laughs> old is relative. Um, I I still have the um, mental acuity I would say of a teenager who loves video games, and yet my lower back. I think I'm an eighty year old. Oh, so Lord. I'm forty seven, and I think that about averages out right. <laughs> and both me and myself were in our mid twenties, with or in our mid thirties, with Rachel being the youngest. All right. <laughs> oh my God, you guys have got to be a riot there. I mean, you're making me laugh, and this is a phone interview. <laughs> we always try for that. We don't have to succeed, but we always try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we either want to make people cry or laugh. So All right. Ideally, both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let Let's dive into that a little bit now. In the beginning of this interview, you guys said that you sing more kind of a melancholy sad songs how did that come about because usually at renaissance festivals you know uh, from my experience anyway it's there to kind of wow the crowd or keep them captivated or make them laugh right um, we're goth trash is how that happens you're what yeah, so, um, so the way uh the way we came about that i actually get a lot of um what what, what i do from bands like the De- decemberists and Voltaire, who okay. do very melancholy music that tends to have a lot to do with death, um, but they they tend to be able to do it in a very lighthearted way, in a very comedic way, and I wanted to bring that out here, because there are a lot of older songs that are about death, and and it's something yeah. that the Renaissance really needed. Mm. Yeah, they mm. needed goth trash, basically, and we provide it. <laughs> goth trash. That's that's a new one on me. <laughs> yeah, what we uh, what we like to call our genre it, it's horror folk. Horror folk, ooh, yeah. I I like that. I like that. <laughs> horror folk. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. I'm wrapping my head around that one. All right. Interesting. <laughs> and of course, it's plenty of upbeat, dancey songs with a lot of jazzy kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it still usually has at least a little bit to do with death. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing. Everybody, every band out here has kind of an identity, and uh, most of the bands out here are going to try and aspire to be bouncy and happy. When you're in a pub and you got people drinking and they want to, you know, clack their boots together, I suppose something magical is bound to happen. But for us, uh, nobody took that pocket genre of a uh, horror. <laughs> so and we're like, well, let's just do the folk Where thing and add, and mm-hmm. add some uh, a slight touch of goth to it and see where it takes us. And uh, it's a good fit. It works out really well. Mm-hmm. You can really play around and have a lot of comedic fun with death, as it turns out. Okay. All right. Very cool. Interesting. Um, and now you guys don't have anything recorded yet, um, but it sounds like you're going to in the future here? Yes, we're going to record an album after fact. Okay, perfect, perfect. So then we'll be able to get a taste of that then. Yep, but you can definitely find us on Facebook. Uh, it's The Morning Wood. Yep. And if you, there are a couple of samples of us singing mm-hmm. uh, on our Facebook page. Okay, excellent, excellent. We'll take a quick listen after this here. And now, do you guys write your own material? Or do you kind of pull yeah. from from really old poetry, old songs, things like that? So kind of all of that. Uh about a little bit over a half of what we do, I did write myself. Uh, there are a couple songs that Rachel wrote as well. 
we do some modern music, but we uh, put it to a, a more Renaissance style. And then there are a couple pieces that are traditional that we do as well. Okay, okay. Do you, so it kind of sounds like you cross the two a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like one of our, our most requested songs that we play is Enter Sandman. Nope. <laughs> like by, by Metallica, yeah. Really? But, as a, but, but more, it has more of a folksy feel because we're entirely acoustic. Ah, okay, excellent. So when you say acoustic, I, I know uh, you've got the accordion, you got a singer. What else do you have? Mandolin, guitar? Uh, we have, uh, I play tenor guitar, which is much like a ukulele. Mm. Chad plays guitar and accordion. Ian plays bass and stand-up bass and percussion. And I'm the singer, so I'm wow. down to playing <laughs> All right, let, oh, let's take a quick step into that. Okay, how do you play stand-up bass? What was it? Accordion and and drums? Uh, accordion and tenor guitar. Yep. Accordion and tenor guitar. Okay, got the singer. <laughs> it, it was. So it can be it can be very overwhelming at times. Uh, it sounds overwhelming. And a ukulele player right next to an accordion and a stand-up bass because they are both very loud. <laughs> do you and have they, to... Um, <laughs> do you use a secret microphone? <laughs> I, I wish I wish I could. It would really save our voices sometimes. Yeah. Mostly uh, just the question of managing kind of the acoustics and the space and the placement of the instruments and the performers uh, to get the most projection out of the scene. Ironically, I... I uh, I played accordion. I picked up accordion. I was out here with a different group, and uh, it's because of the accordion. My back is kind of in the condition it's in, so uh, I've picked up the guitar just because it's lighter. I mean, I'm not even a guitarist, but I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, I always play sitting down now, so at least I'm not putting extra attention to my back. But now I play two instruments instead of one, and it's. And these guys have uh, are been princes, and I should say all three of them have been taking turns carrying the heavy heavy accordion, 50-pound accordion, so that I don't have to, so Ooh. it's been really nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. You got true friendship right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so now you guys said that you're going to jump into the recording studio after the season is done. Um, season for the Renaissance Festival ends in October. Um, I, I guess kind of what is your plan for the winter months here besides being in the studio? maybe do some stuff for Halloween and around Christmas. Um, we talked about doing other Renaissance fairs in the area. Yep, and uh, we also do uh, conventions, like sci-fi, anime, fan conventions as well. Really? Like, yep. Very cool. So we've been, asked, we've been asked to apply for uh, the Siouxland Festival in South Dakota. Yep. Uh, it's, uh, the, the previous band I was in, they go there every year, so... We're starting to get more connections. I see a, a lot of a lot of paths, a lot of outlets available to us. And since we're such a weird, <laughs> in, invented niche that's never really existed before, that might there's a lot of ways that could turn up. So it's kind of exciting to see where that might go. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Very cool, you guys. Oh my goodness. All right. So let's jump into the convention side of things. Um, I guess in my mind. Uh, anime conventions and renaissance festivals are two very different things. We, yeah, they, they, they are they are very, very different, um, but it's still like very nerdy things. And okay. that is who we're trying to really bring into our audience is the nerds out there. <laughs> all right, all right. So if you guys are at a convention, what, what can we expect? I mean, do you guys dress up as anime characters? Do you sing more... Oh, yeah. Kind of songs about anime this characters. This year, I, I pull out all the soft costume wise. Okay. Um, y'all should definitely join me in that next year. <laughs> yes. Wink, wink. I was, I was dressed as a Jedi once. I mean, I, I'm no stranger to being a geek, so uh, I've got a lot. I've got a lot of experience with uh, going crazy in, in those type of environments and thriving. So. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I've done a lot of cosplay in the past, but like not so much uh, on stage with music. But I do have a persona that I like to keep up when I'm on stage. I do like to dress up. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Wonderful. Um, so at the Renaissance Festival, since you guys are there to kind of loop it back, now do you guys dress kind of as, as bards, as uh, street performers, as fairies? What What's your aesthetic? 
<laughs> so we have a. Uh, we each have our own like style. I mine is very dark. Uh, okay. I wear a lot of blacks, a lot of extra shiny stuff all over me. I wear uh, eyeliner and eyeshadow, really trying to go for that evil look. Okay. Because um, he's a flipping demon, so of course we're going to go for that. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, uh, like, uh, Ch- Ch- Chad is more of a pirate-style character. Ian is a uh, Scottish character. And Rachel actually is Charlie Mops. Which, inventor of beer. Yep, the inventor of beer. She's like the, she's like the uh, past version of Kim Kardashian. And so we just treated it as <laughs> tell people, please, please, no applause, no flash photography, please. Now watch out. Here she comes, Charlie Mop. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> uh, I have never heard of uh, Charlie Mop, was it? Mops? It's a song. It's a song. Yep, Charlie Mops is a very famous traditional song. Okay. All right. Interesting. Oh, now I'm going to have to look that up. Yes, you should. It is a very fun song, and we do, we do perform it. Mm-hmm. All right, perfect, perfect. And now, uh, where now I've talked to uh, many musicians throughout the years and things like that. Uh, and you know, getting that studio time, getting that studio cash, is kind of it's it's a struggle. Let's say. Um, so, where are you guys kind of pulling this from? Um, are you guys? Do you have some insight into a studio that you'd like to hit up? Are you kind of saving the cash from your performances? Well, as, as I said, I got pulled, this is Chad, I got pulled into this. I, I ran a recording studio. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I have production credit. I, I uh, mixed uh, the previous band I was in. I, I did their first four, five CDs. So I'm a lot of experience with this type of thing. So I've got everything back back at the house. So mm, mm-hmm. uh, it's one of those things where I've just learned after a full season at best and your voice is kind of honed in and you're kind of just, you know, you we're really kind of ironing out our sound so that maybe a couple of weeks after our voice is healed from all this, we can start laying down some tracks and getting our, you know, our, our newfound digital identity. But we do have access to that. Uh, I, I've done it for quite a number of years and it's nice to jump back into it. So oh, it's nice that mm-hmm. the thing that, that got me here is now it's going to be brought back kind of full circle. So it's, mm-hmm. it's interesting. It's fun. All right. And then with, with uh, me, when I started uh, getting back into music, and uh, trying to, to hone my own craft, I built my own studio in my house. So we do have a really nice sound studio where we will be able to record this stuff. Mm-hmm. Perfect, perfect. Now, let's let's jump into kind of the home studio a little bit. I mean, it's things have changed even in the last decade. I mean, it used to be that you had to go to an actual recording studio to create music and, and to create a CD. And now everything is so accessible. I mean, I'm doing an a, an almost radio interview in the comfort of my living room with my pajamas on. I will admit that. Um, <laughs> and you know, everything's just very accessible. I mean, yes, you have to have a little capital to make it happen. But is this really has this really helped you guys? Kind of uh, put your music out there, put your sound out there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like with me, me specifically, like you said, it's been very accessible, uh, has not been overly expensive. Being able to find good microphones uh, mm-hmm. at a reasonable price has been really easy. And it, it has helped me a lot find my voice and find what I can do as a musician. And then being able to put that out there for other people to then hear it. Mm-hmm. So accessibility has been great. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. And now, so you guys are going to go into the studio here in the winter months. Are you going to launch a CD? Are you going to be up on Bandcamp? Have you even thought that far ahead? I mean, yes, but no. We're, we're still, uh, like like I said, we're kind of in, we're in the I'm, early days of mapping out the CD. How many, okay. songs, uh, you know, how many songs do you think we have, like, currently in our... Uh, ones that we don't have to pay to put on a CD, probably about 10. Yeah, we've got hmm. we've got almost a full CD of originals. I mean, it wouldn't take much to, to talk up a few more. So, um, and you know, really, it, it's balancing. I would say one or two covers wouldn't be unheard of, considering um, I'm also part of ASCAP, and so I've got kind of an end there as far as trying to figure out the price on something like that. Hmm. But you know, we um, like I said, we're still kind of exploring and figuring out what direction we're going in. But th- that door is absolutely open to us. Uh, so I, it's really not 
getting the product finished, uh, getting it getting it mastered, doing all that, that's something that we can handle on our own, and it's just replication costs, which is just kind of an investment, but it's, that's long term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And then from there, yeah, we'll figure out uh, what, what platforms we can put it out on, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect, perfect. Uh, well, I am on the phone with Morning Wood, not to be confused with Good Morning, it's Morning like you're mourning someone's death. Uh, they are a renaissance festival band. Um, and now you guys are currently are in Shakopee. You're currently at the uh, renaissance festival now. So we'll hear some blacksmithing in the background, some people talking. Um, you guys do s- some stage play there as well as just kind of wandering around, uh, entertaining the guests. And now um, you can put out a CD this winter. Uh, what else is there? I mean, if somebody's interested in hiring you guys out, you know, for a pub or a performance, how can they do that? Uh, contact us through our Facebook page um, and through our social media guru, Katie. At, at um, some point, we'll have a web, a better web presence. We'll have a kind of more of a dedicated site, you know. But we do update our Facebook page very regularly. Mm-hmm. We're ridiculously fast. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah but, and like Crystal, as, as you saw yourself, uh, we do respond to messages on Facebook very fast. There are four of us, five of us who are able to see that. And so Perfect. somebody's always looking at their phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's not very renaissance of you. Stop now. We're very sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, Morning Wood, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your busy renaissance uh, schedule to talk to me and to talk to the wider world as well. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for having us. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, knock him dead. (laughs) (laughs) All right, enjoy the day, guys. Yep, thank you. Bye. Thank you.